I am so excited to be back in Thailand. Dad, this is your first time in Thailand. What do you think so far? So far, so good. So far, so good. So the first time that I was in Thailand, if you guys have been with me for that long, was in the spring of 2021. That was back when they still had pretty strong COVID restrictions and you had to do a two week, two week hotel quarantine. So for that trip, I did mainly stay in the south of Thailand. And for this trip, I figured that since my dad likes slightly cooler temperatures and really beautiful nature, mountains, it was worth coming to the north. So we are currently in Chiang Mai, which you could say is actually the capital of the north because it is the largest city in the area and it's the second largest city in all of Thailand. Chiang Mai is definitely the gateway to the mountains, to beautiful nature, and is definitely a cultural capital. Speaking of which, we are actually in the more historic part of the city known as the Old Town. It's where most tourists probably stay uh, if they're coming to Chiang Mai for the first time. So while we will be showing you some other districts of the city, I thought it would be good to start our day here with, with what dad? What, what are we going to have this morning? Banana, mango, pancake. The best, the best banana, mango, pancakes we have ever had in our lives. They are out of this world. So let's get to it. For those of you who have never heard of Chiang Mai, this is a very popular place to visit in Thailand for basically all demographics. You will see a very wide range of tourists here, everybody from retirees to the digital nomads to the Gen Z's backpacking Thailand. This place has something for everyone. And in being the gateway to the north, Chiang Mai is a great place to book a lot of different day trips, whether you want to visit an elephant sanctuary, go hiking, go to the hot springs, take a Thai cooking class. There's definitely a lot of different things to do in the area, and Chiang Mai is a great place to start from. This is the restaurant that we were raving about guys. It is called Good Souls and it is actually a 100% plant-based restaurant, so totally vegan. My dad has been more or less full vegetarian for this trip, so if you prefer to eat more plant-based, this is a great place to come. Now, if you have been to Thailand, you will know just how amazing the mango is here. Best mango I've ever had. <laughs> Very fresh, nice, soft, tasty. Yeah. Never had anything like it. So this is it. This is everything, guys. If you come to Chiang Mai, I swear you have to come to this restaurant. Are you ready for your pancakes, Dad? I sure am. This, <laughs> I think this is the third time I had Awesome. Yeah, I think we've been here like three or four times now. We are not sick of them. And then also their homemade whipped cream that they give you with every order is really, really good. Another popular district of Chiang Mai that I definitely think is worth checking out or staying in, depending on what you're looking for, is Nimin. This is kind of the hipster, nightlife, really nice restaurants, big shopping center kind of area. It doesn't really have all the local attractions and the history that the old town does and if you are looking for something quite a bit more lively, especially at night, I think this is the district for you. To give you guys an approximate budget of what you can expect to pay for accommodation in Chiang Mai if you are staying in the more popular tourist districts like the Old Town or Nimin, I would say that the average dorm room at a hostel is going to be around the 10 US dollar mark. 
a mid-range hotel is going to be about 30 US dollars and that's actually a fairly nice place and if you're looking at the more luxury hotels in the city those would probably start around the 70 to 80 dollar mark. For food it's overall budget friendly especially if you are going to the more local sort of eating places or street food you can definitely get a full meal for less than five US dollars. Even with some of the mid-range places, you can get a meal from $5 to $10. And then if you're really going to a fancy place, it's going to be around $20 to $30. So have you figured out what your surprise is yet? No. If you had to take a guess, what kind of weird food do you think I'm going to make you eat that you have never had before? Well, who knows? Well, take a guess. Some bugs? No. No? You will be trying Dorian for Dorian. the first time today. Oh yeah. The uh, king of fruits. So I saw this place as we were walking around the district a few days ago and looking it up, it has an enormous menu with some very unique dishes all made with Dorian. I am so excited guys, this is gonna be so fun. <laughs> so obviously they do have a lot of, you know, cool drinks, shakes, you can try it that way. Or they have a lot of desserts, like they got the bingsu, the kind of shaved ice, and then possibly the weirdest one, I don't know if we'll try this, but the durian pizza. Of course, all of this is substantially more expensive than, you know, a regular pizza here in Thailand would be or anything else because durian itself is probably one of the most expensive fruits in the world. You want a taste test? <laughs> all right, my dad's really getting into the spirit here. Um, let's give your matcha durian tea a taste test. What do you think? It's good. Really? Ah, okay. At least the first sip does. Yeah, so you can see obviously they got durian, not. matcha. Well, no, it's it. You got some. You got some durian. You? And then they have cold foam here. All right, matcha durian. Cheers. Oh, yeah, I can taste it. See, here's the weird thing. I don't get it. Like, I don't get it. This is the most expensive fruit in the world, and I personally don't think it's that delicious. You guys. <laughs> There is gold leaf, gold leaf on our durian. You haven't seen this yet. Look at this. There is edible gold leaf on our very expensive, well, I guess not that that expensive uh, durian sticky rice. So we made up a little piece for my dad. The moment of truth trying durian for the very first time. Let's go. Okay. Okay. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, it's not bad taste. Eh? No, but okay. Kind of put put it up to your nose. Do you smell it? No, I kind of smell a thing. So durian is known as the stinky fruit, and I know firsthand because the time that I did try it in Bangkok, I didn't eat the whole piece that I bought, and then we brought it back to our house big mistake. It stunk up the fridge so bad. Even most hotels in Southeast Asia have literal signs that say no durian allowed because of the stench. And now it is time for the pizza, but one thing I didn't realize before is they also give you like a little sauce here as well. I guess you're supposed to pour it on the pizza. I don't know. Oh, that looks so weird. This is so weird. very sweet. It's like a very sweet pizza. I agree with your review. It's just okay. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of a letdown to be honest considering how much we spent. Like this is gonna be like you know $45 probably something like that. But it's an experience. You know it's an experience and I think yeah if you've never tried durian before like maybe you'll like it. Some people are crazy about this stuff. Like there's people who will pay hundreds of dollars for the top durian and wanted on everything obviously because if they didn't places like this wouldn't exist
right, we are back in the old town. The sun will be setting here in the next half hour. And I think it is time for us to grab some dinner that is one of the most famous dishes that you could have here in Northern Thailand, which is cow soy. For those of you who don't know, I actually worked part-time for like five or six years in a really famous Thai restaurant uh, in Toronto called Suko Thai. And so I have eaten so much cow soy, <laughs> so much Thai food in general. So it's gonna be interesting how the cow soy we have today stacks up with what I had at work because we had, you know, authentic Thai chefs and it was like rated as the best in the city. So this is a restaurant that was recommended to me by a friend who came here and said that their cow soy is amazing. And it looks like they have a few different options where you could get pork, chicken, beef, or fish. I actually really like beef cow soy, so I think I'm gonna go with that. What do you feel like getting, Dad? I do not know anything. You don't know anything? I'm tired. <laughs> I've worked this guy hard today. Yeah, he works me hard every day. <laughs> Not easy being a YouTuber, is it? Not easy having a daughter for a YouTuber. <laughs> That's the way to put it. <laughs> the fried rice came fast. This is my dad's probably favorite thing to get. And this is fresh pineapple fried rice with yeah. some eggs. So go for it. That's good. Nice, nice. All right, the cow soy actually looks pretty good. And what's interesting, I've seen this at a few places, is that they give you this side of, I don't even know, like fermented vegetables or pickled, pickled, that's the word I'm looking for. Pickled vegetables, some lime, some onion. Cow soy is a northern Thai dish and it has this really rich, uh, creamy yellow curry. So I'm gonna try that. Ooh. <laughs> they asked for no spice. Uh, I think they lost that part. That is spicy. I actually really like the noodles in cow soy. They're um, egg noodles, so they are a bit richer, I find, than just rice noodles. Mm -hmm. Very nice. And then let's try the beef. All in all, very good. Um, I think just the spice <laughs> took me by surprise. I definitely asked for no spice, but it's quite spicy, so I don't know how I will handle that. <laughs> but both is good. Like, this is obviously delicious here, and what we used to serve back in Toronto was delicious, so probably wherever you go in Chiang Mai, you will be able to find a really good bowl of cow soy. Well, what a day. Yeah, what a day. Chiang Mai, you guys. We were actually planning to go to the night market tonight, but I think both me and my dad are actually yeah. quite tired. Yeah, we're tired. Not it, today. Not today. But would recommend it to you guys that there is uh, a place in the city where it's like a nightly night market, and then on the weekends there's one um, in the old town that starts around 5 p.m. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful in terms of some things to see and do here in Chiang Mai. Let me know in the comments if any of you have been here or if you have tried durian. Dad, thanks so much for being my co-host. You did great keeping oh, up oh, with yeah. the young people. I'm trying to. As always, I'm sending you guys so much love. I hope you're having a fantastic day and keep being your own kind of beautiful. Bye guys. Bye guys.